everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I am going to be showing you how to make this lovely, very cute handbag. So it's very unusual looking. This idea has come from this image of a handbag. Oh, let me get it back here. This one here. This one's leather. Really, really cute. And I don't think I've done too bad. You can see there. I think it's pretty, pretty close as I can get. It's got a big circle bit here in the middle, but in terms of like all the little rivets and the, the actual shape, that's what I've gone for, but bearing in mind this is leather, so it's a bit softer and squidgier. Obviously this is a lot more um, squared off and stuff, but yeah, really like it. So um, I'll just bring it a bit closer so you can see the detail there. So basically this piece here, I have distressed this in exactly the same way that I did for my wood effect handles that I done on the gift bag, which I'll share up here, um, which you all loved. That was really, really good, that one. Um, so again, I've done it here just to give that real look of like wood, it's got lots of texture there, just yeah, just gives the bag something. And then inside it's, it's quite big. You can fit definitely a nice big size candle in there. Obviously wrap it in some tissue, but um, it's just a really very pretty way of presenting a gift. And then I've got this hardware here, which I got from the works. Um, they do still have these, I checked. So again, I'll share those links. And I've done these little kind of um, chain effect using the same craft card. It's the Dewcrafts craft card, 300 GSM, so really strong, but you can really manipulate it and you know I love it. Haven't used it for ages, but I seem to be on a roll with it again at the moment since the uh, suitcase that I posted up last week. Um, and then the bottom, that just goes right the way around to the back. I've not put any hardware on the back. Like you can do, but I haven't. I just decided not to. And then just a nice little flower there. And again, these little kind of metal um, bits to finish it off. So yeah, really, really love that one. And it's very easy to make. So you are going to need, let's bring everything in. Ooh, and throw it all over the place. Okay, so I have got the um, Distressed Oxide Vintage Photo again, same that I used on my suitcase last week. Um, it's a really handy one to have for distressing, hence Vintage Photo. So that's what I'm using. So I've gone ahead and done all of that. This is my little drawer of hardware. I have, that shouldn't be in there, that's in another drawer. But these are what they are. Um, so it's just all these bits here. So I've already got my two there. You, the pack had quite a lot in there. I think there's about 20 or so. But I've also got these, which I'm gonna be using in a coming project. So they're like your jean buttons and they come with the um, little uh, nails there for the backs. Um, yeah, there's lots of bits and pieces. So anyway, that's what I've got. This is the last of my little um, embellishments here. Now these were, I've had these a long time. I purchased these from New Look clothing shop in their um, accessories department and they were to go in your hair. And I remember saying in previous videos, there's no way I'd stick them onto my hair. I'd get in a mess. Anyway, I've only got four left. Oh, so I probably won't use them on this one. I'll find something else, but um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> you will need whatever you decide to go for. You'll need two, four, six, eight, all right? So I've already done my flower there, and I use this with the scrap, because this is a piece of 10 by 12 cardstock. So the piece that you cut off, I use then to die cut my matching flowers. And then that's everything there, already distressed um, to talk through with you. So like I said, you need a piece of 10 by, 12 cardstock so first of all this in the 10 inch orientation that is going to be the front okay so this top square here is this square here so if you're not using pattern paper like me sorry if you're not using plain like me and you want to use pattern paper you need to make sure it's up the right way okay with that in mind so along the 10 inch side get my around the right way you're going to score at one inch two and a half seven and a half and nine inches and then rotate onto the 12 inch side and score at four and a half and seven and a half okay so they're all mirror images of each other um, but to start off with your if you're not using plain paper obviously if it's patterned make sure it's up this right way when it's in the 10 inch orientation okay so that's that piece then let's talk through all these so this is for the main kind of closure the main flap that goes over and you need a piece that's three and a quarter by seven and a half along seven and a half inch you want to score at one inch okay burnish and then just with my distressed oxide and my little dauber here you just go along and just go around and distress all your edges and do it all before you stick it down and make sure you burnish and then distress okay and then you'll get that really nice kind of authentic look i'll show you how to bend that and kind of get that crinkled look in a minute okay just pop all that back so i don't have any uh mishaps then this is the base so this is the piece oh, 
that wraps around the bottom here. And this is a piece of five by five and a half. Along the five and a half inch side, you want to score at one and a quarter and four and a quarter. Okay, so you will have a one and a quarter side on each side here. Now this one here I've already cut and you're going to cut both sides. Now to do that all you need to do is grab your ruler and a pencil and you'll do this on both sides. I've already cut this one just to speak, keep the video as short as I can. But along that five inch side pop your ruler there, okay five, and just mark at half an inch and at four and a half. So you've just got a half an inch marker. And then all I'm doing, i draw the pencil as well, is just drawing like a little half triangle there, a little um, wedge shape like so. Okay, so just come in half an inch and then just draw your pencil to there and just cut that. And it, again, there's no real, it's just part of the design. That's all it is. It's purely there as a decorative um, piece, nothing more. So if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Just rub out that pencil and then again go around fold it all and distress it and obviously I've cut into that so I just need to distress up my ends there like so okay so that's our base now already so you need to do that on both sides then you're going to need for the handle this is a piece of one and a quarter by four and a quarter Along the one and a quarter inch side, you want to score at five eighths of an inch, so just right down through the middle. Again, burnish and distress. And also with this piece here, just with the bone folder, once you've folded it in half, just go along and curl it. But you want to curl it when it's in half, and already you get a really nice, especially with the craft card, it just starts to kind of go a bit fluffy, a bit worn, just like a normal leather strap would on any handbag. So that's why I love using it to make bags. Okay, you can just see if I bring that one in there, just how nice that one looks. Okay, and again, get that all distressed, so that's our handle. Then these are our decorative pieces for the bottom. Okay, so again, purely optional, but I think it's these bits that, that make the bag look more like a, a designer handbag. So these are one by two, and along the two inch side, you want to score at one, right through the middle. You want two pieces, again, burnish, fold in half, and just go around and distress those all. So that's those. Then I've got these two pieces here, which are to pop our little kind of rivet on, and that's there. So these are one and a half by three quarters. Along the one and a half inch side, you want to score at three quarters. So again, right through the middle, just as you did with the other bits, fold them in half and go along and distress them all. So that's two pieces of those. Then these are all for our little kind of chain, so all of our little rings, and you want um, one, two, three, four, five, and then you've got an extra bit, so say six rings on each side. Um, so I've got two, four, and then, oh no, one of them is my, uh, yeah, keep that one, so that's for another bit again. So actually I need to cut that again for some reason, not cut enough. Um, so these are four and three quarter, four and three eighths, sorry, by a quarter. Okay, so tiny little strips. So again, four and three eighths of an inch by a quarter. When you've done them, distress them, fold it in half, and cut in half. Okay, like so. And again, just kind of dirty up the edges there. And do like so. Okay, so you are going to need, um, so that was one, two, three, yeah, you need six strips because I need to do another three and make them. So in total you will have 12 of these little pieces. Okay, so that's all ready for that. And then this piece here is for this bit here to kind of um, lock our, our closure in. And this is a piece of four and three eighths by three eighths of an inch. So it's just a little bit wider. You can have it thicker, you can have it thinner, it's entirely up to you, but they're just the measurements that I've used. And again, get that all distressed. Okay, so lots of little bits to talk you through there, but hopefully you've got it all, and as always, it would all be listed in my blog. Okay, so now let's start putting the bag together. So first of all, you just wanna go along and just burnish all of your score lines. Okay, so that's all my score lines burnished. Flip it over, and what you're going to do first of all, I've got a mark there. I'm going to get rid of that quickly, where that's come from. 
Almost, I've got another ruler, I can get rid of that in a minute. Okay, so along the side where you've got your two score lines here, so this is our base, okay, you want to cut up and cut all the way down. So go past the first score line, cut down to the second score line, and again on this one here, like so. Okay, so you're just cutting that piece, and then you want to remove this piece all together, okay, and then rotate it and do the same on the other side. Okay, so that's what you should have. Now with these outer pieces, just fold them up, okay, like so. And then what we're going to do, flip it over and bring in your sides and the pieces that you folded outwards going to go like that and that's going to give us our box shape. So again just bring up the side, bring up one of these, keep that piece facing outwards, bring the other one up and because of the way that we've scored it and the way I've worked out the measurements it meets exactly in the centre there. That's all going to be stuck and that is the shape that we're going to get. So it's really really easy to do. So what you want to do, this is a little bit, not by any means hard, just a little bit fiddly, you want to add glue all on this piece. Okay. Then you want to put glue on the inside of this one and just do this one, you don't need to do both. I mean you can if you want but it just might be too much glue. Okay, like so. Then bring, get that bit of glue there. I'm going to bring this one up first and just stick it like so. Make sure you get this inside piece here right flush with the corner here. So the side of this piece that we just brought up, get it right flush with it and then we know that we've got everything lining up nicely. Okay, keep this one out like this and bring this one round and again just concentrate on sticking that bottom bit down. Okay, and then you can kind of, they will just want to go together anyway and they should marry up perfectly because it's all the right measurements. So now I can stick them and stick that kind of all at the same time. Like so. Okay, see the bottom there, it's all nicely lined up. So again, with this side, fold that in so you can easily pop your glue. Again, you can use tape if you want to, but you just get that little bit of wiggle room. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add it just to one side of this. Like so. And again, do the one without the glue on the side first, just so you can really kind of form the shape, like so. And then just bring that other one in. And kind of pinch it together, and at the same time you can push it all in. But it will all, again, should all line up nicely. And if for some reason it's not, I've got probably a millimetre or so where it's out a little bit. You can see just here, just with my scissors, I'm just going to go along and kind of line my scissors up with the one underneath and I can just get that all nicely tidied up. Again, no one else would really notice that but me. So There we go, now I've got that nice and flush. Okay, so don't worry if you do go over a little bit and just make sure it's all stuck down. Okay, so that is the bag. It's really, really easy. Everything now is just really decoration and um, that main kind of uh, flap, that closure bit. So let's add the base. So that was this piece here, which you should have all burnished, all distressed and your little wedges cut out there. And basically that is gonna sit underneath and just come up. So it does create a really strong box for you, which is why I said it is gonna be good for like a candle or something heavier. Now what I would say is because I've done this exact measurement as the base, obviously it's coming up around the sides, it is a little bit snug but again I'm trying to do it so you don't have to do those one sixteenths of an inch, those really kind of in between. If you just do what I'm doing here with your bone folder and kind of just almost get rid of the score line, although it will always be there, what you've done is you've kind of just like squashed it out a little bit and it will just allow you to curve it around, you can see there. It just sits around it much, much nicer. Obviously that bit will be stuck down. Okay, so then what you want to do with this piece, get the right glue, is cover glue all over it. So on the sides, everywhere. Okay, and then get your box and just sit that 
over there again. Like I said, I'm using the wet glue, so I've got a little bit of wiggle room. And then just bring up one side, fold it over, and bring down the other side. Okay. And then fold that one over. Like I said, purely decorative, but I do think it does really give the bag something. And then with my bone folder, I'm just going inside there and along the inside, just with my ruler. And you've got a really snug, really nice base there to our box. Like I said, once that's dry, so that become really, really hard. Okay, so that's that piece. Now we've got these larger, these were the one by two that we scored at, at one, fold in half. And these are gonna lock in over the very bottoms of these kind of little wings that we've got on our bag, like so. Okay, so again, all you wanna do there is just add glue all over it. Like I said, it's all just decorative. But it's just fun ways to really, you know, give your bag a very, very different look. And this bag does take, really doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, it takes longer because I've just stressed, but if you're not distressing your um, card, it won't take long at all. So I'm actually gonna have this as my front and that as the back, just because I've got a little mark, although that's probably just glue. Anyway, you can see now how it's starting to really take shape. So next we need to do our handle because I'm going to do this piece last. So what you want to do is I need to cut all of my extra bits in a minute. Right, so you'll have all these pieces and you're going to have six for each side. So you'll have 12 in total, so pretend I've got 12 here. But basically you want to get one and just go along and curl them all with your bone folder. Pop a little bit of glue, about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, not much at all and just stick that together and once it's stuck enough I use my tweezers just to really stick it down but pinch it and stretch it okay so you want to start making it more into an oval shape like that there we go that's the shape that you want to make okay so I use the tweezers because it allows me to pull it without and at the same time obviously I can really stick that down as well Okay, and that's what you will have. Then get your next one, pop it inside, bring it around. Doesn't matter where it sits right now, you just want to make sure obviously it links through because you want to create this chain. So again, just stick that down just so it kind of adheres initially. And then I can use my tweezers to really grip it and then just stretch it out again. Okay. And you can see now, we're starting to get our little chain. Okay, then get your next one. And again, link it through. Again, pinch it and pull it. And then get the next one. And do four of these, okay? Okay, so I've got my four now together like so. Then grab another one and grab this piece here. Now, if you don't have this, you can just use make another ring. Okay, just make another piece like this and we will just attach. So basically, so say this is your, say this is your, this is this, because you don't have it, just make it into a circle. Um, but I would stick it like that together. So stick it that way, just the same, just a little bit there. And then what you will do is this piece here um, you will cut in half, so cut it so it's just two pieces and say this is the open side, stick it in between like that. Imagine all of this is already attached as well, okay? And then just attach that over each side because you'll have two pieces. One will be this side and one will be on the back. Hopefully I've made you, you know, understand that. Um, but obviously I'm working with these so it's a bit harder for me to explain. So what you're going to do with these is just thread it through and around like so and then you're going to stick like that. So all I'm going to do is with it open with the rivet in there or the ring, the link, whatever you want to call it. Um, probably putting glue about three quarters of the way up and then pop it in there. Again, give a little bit of clearance for it to 
move on the top and just make sure it's in the middle of that piece and there you have it. See how nice that looks? Now I feel like I'm not explaining that other one better so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a scrap piece but you will have, okay, so like I said, if you don't have this, you'll have your six pieces as normal, but then cut another piece, okay? Now, so this would be that extra piece you've cut, and then this here, which was the uh, three quarters by whatever it was, so let's just pretend this is it here, and it was folded in half. So I said what you will have to do is cut it in half again. Okay, so you'll just have two squares. This piece here, this extra piece, so there you'll have your six, one will be free still. Pop that through, glue it like that, okay. Stick it to one of these inside, and then you will stick one side with it like that, and this other piece you will stick over the other side. This piece, that piece will be purely decorative, and that is the look you will have instead. Okay, so hopefully that makes a bit more sense. So now going back to what we were doing here, so now I've popped that one on. So I've got my six pieces here, four, five and six. So this one you're going to pop through and then you're going to also then pop through here. This is a bit fiddly, so I've got it linked through there and also through the cardboard links that I've made. And then you just want to attach it the same way that I was doing before. Grab my tweezers and just hold that in place for a minute. And again, just stretch it. And there I will have my first lot all attached. Okay. Then with this one here, this is going to be on the handle. So this was that piece that I folded in half and then told you to curl like so. With this one, the last piece, number six, you're going to pop it through, bring it around and then you're going to glue it the way that I told you to glue it if you didn't have the metal piece. So this time I'm gluing a little bit inside and just sticking them together. Okay, then open up your handle. Decide what's the front and the back because you want the piece that's folded over to be at the front your kind of open bit to be at the back. It's not the end of the world, but it's just the way I've done it. And then, making sure your chain is all kind of in the right, it hangs right, it's not twisted or anything. It will naturally, the way that I've done it, that will fold around and it will be flat to sit in your handle, like so. And basically you're gonna open up your handle, okay? Pop a bit of glue underneath and just pop it inside, making sure it's in the centre of your handle. Now, you'll have this other one done as well. Really, I would stick them both down at the same time, but I've just done that end because what I can still do, and you can still do, is you can still open it all up there. Okay, you can see that I've just stuck it on that one half of it. So now when I go to put the other one in, I'll stick that in, then I'll put glue all in the handle and fold that in half and that will give us the handle to the bag. Okay, so hopefully I've explained that all. It's pretty self-explanatory when you're doing it yourself, so you, it should, you should make sense of it all. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get this other one all finished. Okay, so that one's now all in place. I finished it again there, and then I thought I would join at this point just so you can see me do it. So again, making sure my chain's all in the right way. Just gonna pop some glue under there, just throw that one in the bin because I keep picking that one up, I don't need that one. And again, just pop it inside like so, so that's how you should have both of them. And then you just want to add glue all over that inside and then just sandwich it together. And I absolutely love that, I think it looks so nice. Again, you can go longer if you want to, once you know how to do it, you know, there's no reason why you can't make that even longer. Okay, so that's that done. So now onto this piece. So I told you to score at one inch along this seven and a half, I think it was. Yeah, score at one inch, burnish it, distress it, do what you need to do. Then what I did at the bottom, I can't remember how far I came in actually. I think it was literally maybe like a quarter of an inch. Um, yeah, it was, I remember doing it now. So along the bottom here, which is three and a quarter, just mark at three and, so mark at one quarter, 
and mark it three okay and then all I did was just kind of just graduated it I didn't really put a pointer you can see there I'm just just roughly and then again just dirty up the edges there like so okay then to get that real kind of textured finish that I've got on there again it's entirely up to you if you don't want to do that I just grabbed my ruler and just curved it like so okay so you can just have it like that if you want a nice clean finish but you know me I like to change it a little bit start from where you've done that burnished piece there and just literally break all of the fibers so start kind of you're almost rolling it but you're not because you are just if I bring it up here can you see what I'm doing I'm literally going along and just kind of really breaking it down making it so soft exactly the same way that I made the handles on that other bag so those of you that have done that will know exactly what you're doing here because I know quite a lot of you done that bag and sent me wonderful pictures so again just and can you start to see you start to get that really cool texture and what I did then as well is each time I was bending it I was just kind of rubbing over it a bit more because the distressed ink was picking up the grain and you see there you really get to see it more um, again I'm filming in the evening so you're not getting the natural light with it but I think you'll still get it and you'll certainly see it in the pictures so just keep doing that until you've gone all the way to the end if that is what you're doing okay so that's that piece now all done and all distressed then you want to flip it over and on this flat piece here you just want to add your glue okay and then again this is when you need to decide your front and your back so this is going to be my back you just want to sit that over line up the score line with the top of the bag and just make sure you've got an equal side here and here and just get that all stuck down lay it down on the other side and just with your bone folder just go in there you can really add some pressure with the bone folder make sure it's all nicely stuck down okay so you get a nice finish there on the back and now that will go over okay and the good thing about this is it's expandable so if you've got something taller you know it will allow for that but you can also come down really far as well so now we just need to hold that in place that's when this last strip comes in and this was that piece that was three eighths of an inch by four and three eighths of an inch okay and basically you just need to decide where you want it to go so I just put some glue about half half an inch in on both ends and I stuck it so it was so I came down the bottom part was one inch would be enough so again one inch that's roughly there so again you want to stick this down nice and straight make sure you've got an equal amount on each side there from the edge so I've come down one inch okay get that all stuck like so and then just slide that under and it will grip to it because it's curved so it will really kind of stay wherever you want it to but I brought it down so you've got kind of about a quarter of an inch showing there and that is the bag so now I've just got my little flower here and I just thought it breaks up that brown in the middle so you just want to stick this just a little bit of glue and only stick it on that strip don't stick it on your actual um, handle um, sorry closure and just again just make sure you've got it nice and centered and there you have it again just move that around like I said it will stay there how cute is that now I've just realized the colors I've chosen it looks like a baby shower <laughs> looks like we've got is it a one for a baby girl and one for a baby boy so let's move that out of the way so I always get worried my ink's gonna go everywhere so there's that one there and then here's the pink <laughs> aren't they adorable I think they're so cute really love how these have come together and I hope you've enjoyed it too like I said I'm gonna leave these blank for the minute but if you have got any I mean you can let me just grab I've got these ones here I could put blue you know on the, all of these pieces here because these have got all kinds of colors I've got pearlescent there I mean you'll see what I go for because you'll see it in the videos I might do the pearlescent ones actually that match the pearl in the middle there so anyway add whatever ones you want but I think it's gorgeous you can also personalize these I think they'd look really nice with an initial 
maybe in the middle here you could do a circle disc in the middle and put an initial in there or something I think it'd be super fun but anyway there you have it hope you liked today's tutorial please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye